Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, members of the panel. I'm going uh, to talk about uh, our first experience with the new Pentacam RXL Wave. Uh, these are my disclosures. We also work together with, Ocu with uh, Oculus uh, on research projects. So I want to share with you two uh, uh, studies where we look at the Pentacam RXL Wave reproducibility, uh, comparing different devices and also looking at different uh, patient population. In the first study, the first clinical trial, we uh, compared uh, three patient groups, phagic, pseudophagic patients, and those with keratoconus uh, with three devices, the NIDEC, um, the Schwind, and um, the Oculus device, as you can see here. Three consecutive measurements were done. Then we looked at the quality of the data. We looked at the standard deviations. We had actually real-world data, so they were not uh, so much selected, these patients are just uh, in these three groups. And only measurements were uh, used when the, the internal system of the machine says uh, the measurements are OK. Uh, um, so we had good uh, quality measurements. Let's look at the beginning here. We're looking at spherical aberration in fakey guys. Uh, uh, here, a comparison between the Pentacam and the uh, Schwind uh, wavefront analyzer. You can see here the first, second, and third measurement with the uh, Pentacam XL here with the Schwind device. They measure more or less exactly the same, as you can see. Standard deviation is uh, similar in with both machines, a little bit better, actually, with the Pentacam. And if you see the difference between first and second, uh, first and third, and second and third measurement, you see that the difference is much smaller in the Pentacam XL compared to the Schwind device, and you can also see it a little bit here at the variation uh, of these bars. When we look at the objective refraction, so the uh, spherical equivalent uh, here of the fakie guys, including uh, all, all the patients that we had, uh, we have more or less identical values between the NIDEC and the Pentacam device here, a mean value of around 0.8 to 0.9 diopters. Interestingly, the Schwind device showed something quite different actually here. But we had very good uh, um, uh, uh, same data in, in these both devices. Also, if you look at the astigmatism, um, they all kept here within 0.5 diopters of difference, as you can see here. Uh, uh, so there is not much, much different, and they had uh, also good repeatability. The only thing that was different was the uh, Schwind device here. Uh, I will talk about that later when we look at the keratoconus patient. And the pseudophagy guys, similar data, again, almost identical values with the Pentacom XL wave. And uh, the NIDEC device, very good blend Altman uh, curve. And otherwise, again, the Schwind device was not uh, in that line. Uh, but it was in that line when we looked at the keratoconus patients here, as you can see. Uh, here we have almost exactly the same values in all three machines and very good uh, blend Altman and very good uh, values here. So it's quite interesting to see that these different machines uh, uh, measure differently, but we had a very good uh, uh, um, uh, values of the Pentacam and the NIDEC device. You have seen that uh, picture here. This is what a normal faking eye looks like. And what you get, you get the refraction, you get the wavefront, you get the axial lengths, you get the tomography, and you get the retroillumination photos, as you can see. So with one view, with one uh, field, you can see almost everything you need for cataract or refractive patients when you look at them. Uh, here are two examples of the retroillumination photos. This is of a fakie gland, so you can see the cataract and the structure of the cataract. Here you see the pseudophagy guy, you see the capsulotomy here, you see folds in the capsule. We may use it also to quantify PCO on the long run, and also, as you have just heard, looking at the uh, centration and rotational stability of lenses and so on. So this is quite nice that we have that also. If you look at different measurements, uh, I will show you uh, some individual patients here with uh, right and left eye, three consecutive measurements. You can see how good they uh, fit together. So they are, they are done uh, uh, one minute after the other in these patients. This is a 47-year-old uh, Caucasian uh, patient, ametropic. And you see uh, they have more or less identical values. Here's an Asian patient for those who are interested if there are differences measuring different ethnicities here myopic uh, uh, patient, and uh, you can see also that uh, in the wavefront and the high order operation, there's not much fluctuation, which is quite interesting here in hyperopic, uh, uh, a old patient, cataract patient, pseudophagic, uh, with constant values, and keratoconus uh, a patient, as you can see here, also the card and uh, the specific uh, over high order operations can be seen that they are very consistently measured uh, uh, regardless of how often you do this.
which leads us to the uh, second uh, clinical trial where we looked uh, for premium IOL patients, what, what is beneficial in the Pentacamma XF ELF that we could use if we want to identify candidates or exclude candidates or want to see why some patient is not so good. We have the uh, um, spherical apparation, the high order apparation, the cord mu, the distance between the vertex normal and the pupil center. These would be some parameters we could look at. So we looked at these in uh, these uh, patients where we excluded these keratoconus or post-LASIK and other uh, corneal disease uh, patients. Again, same setup, three consecutive measurements. Uh, only uh, high quality measurements were used for, for the calculation, 64 eyes uh, we've collected so far. Both studies are interim studies, so we're increasing the numbers uh, uh, when we uh, continue with these studies. Let's look at the high order operation here, uh, cornea four millimeter sound. You see here the mean and the standard deviation and almost identical measurements if you have first, second and third. So very good uh, reversibility. The spherical aberration, as you can see here again, with the normal standard deviation and uh, a very uh, similar uh, first, second and third measurement. So again, we have a very good uh, uh, persistency of uh, values. And this also applies to the called uh, mu here, as you can see with uh, these values. And you see just a little variation between the measurements. So with the first clinical impression or first clinical test of the RXL wave in our clinic, we show very promising results. If you look at the uh, spherical aberrations, subjective refraction, phagic, pseudophagic, and also keratoconus eyes, um, we think we can use it very much uh, with the premium IOL selection. Uh, additional uh, features of total eye wavefront refraction, ritual illumination, especially for me in the university, of course, it's an interesting tool, but I think also in the everyday life, uh, you can have a lot of good hints from these and good uh, uh, documentation, actually, also. You don't need a special photographic setup, for example, for ritual illumination uh, photos. So before and after cataract or refractive surgery, that would be very interesting to use this combination of all these. So I think the, with the Pentacam RXL wave, we have reached now a new uh, thing. It's either the next generation of our diagnostic tools or, so to say, the best of all the worlds that we have in what is possible now for uh, our diagnostic possibilities of the anterior segment. Thank you very much for your attention.